The music yet discovered. A beautiful noise. Pretty rowdy for a couple of junkies. I've never heard anything like that before. You're all being paid.
My brother Mike and Alan Anton, who had been playing in bands in the late 70s, came back to Toronto. And uh, my brother Pete joined up with them. My brother John joined up with them. They started jamming. Nothing was concrete. They were just playing. And it started to come together. And my brother Mike thought, this isn't bad. And so he asked me one day, as we were walking down the street, would you like to sing? Which was a very unusual question, because I was had no intention of being a musician or wanting any part of it. Um, but I thought, OK, I would. But I'd only sing in front of him. So I sang in front of him for a couple of days. And then he said, well, let's get the other guys in. We sang together, played together, and became Kelby Junkies. Now it all begins. The war continues to spiral down. Spiral down. I've laid it out on paper. Instructions of what to do As my mind begins to waver Losing contact with you Now it all begins Nor continues to spiral down, spiral down. Look upon the sand. upon the other a better understanding I will spiral down spiral Continue to spiral down I'm nowhere near my peace 
as you spiral down. Now it all begins The world continues to I'm nowhere near my peace As you spy Nowhere near my peace As you spy down This is an old song.
What we've been able to do is maintain a Cowboy Junkie sound. I have no idea what that sound is. I don't know how it comes about. I, I couldn't describe it to you. I couldn't even listen to a record and say, oh, that's it. It's, it's so out there for me. Um, and yet I've heard that other people have sort of heard our stuff and say, well, you know, it's, it's not what I thought you were, but there's that sound, you know. So I don't know what it is, um, but we've maintained it for 20 years. It's something uh, that we when the four of us get together, it's not just my voice or Michael's playing or whatever. It's the four of us. And when we get together, it's no different than when we were kids 20 years ago. I mean, we have so much fun doing it. We really, we still enjoy each other's company. Uh, we still get off on our music, you know. We still think, oh, yeah, that was good, you know. <laughs> Whether anybody else thinks so or not doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's still really fun. And... Um, and I don't think that even in the early days or even now, we've never really had such a huge following or such huge success that we ever had to prove anything to anybody. We, we just were able to do it ourselves, maintain a career, and, and that's what we do. I read the other day that um, if you don't have good posture, uh, you sort of hold all the bad uh, vibes and, and, and moods inside your body. And uh, so uh, I was looking at my brother Mike earlier. <laughs> and, and uh, well, come on, you're faking it now. <laughs> and so, okay, well, you know, people always ask me, where do all these sad songs come from? I don't know. He writes them, have nothing to do with me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Just watch him play. Although tonight it's very exciting because uh, the camera guys asked him if he'd, he'd uh, sort of twist out towards the audience. And um, so he's moved his chair, but he's still looking this way. But anyway, <laughs> you get a whole new view of Mike tonight. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this article I was reading about your posture and letting all the bad stuff out if you walk tall or something. Uh, this next song was written by a guy uh, who uh, wrote a lot sadder songs than my mother, my brother um, Michael ever write? Uh, and uh, uh, I was looking at pictures of him, and, and he kind of well, kind of hunched over too. So there might be something to this theory. Anyway, this song was written by a man named um, Hank Williams, and uh, he died a young, young man with a an old soul. It's called I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry.
You know, touring is a, 
this out of world experience. I mean, it, at the best of times, it's fantastic, and at the worst of times, it's the worst hell you could ever be in. Um, and the only thing that keeps me out on the road is playing every night. So you have this hellish experience living <laughs> for most of the day, and then you get about two to three hours of this greatness that you're just on stage. I love being on stage now, and I'm happy to be on stage, and I feel content. Um, and then you have experiences where, yeah, you suddenly are in, God, Idaho, and, and Neil Young's playing down the road, or Lou Reed, or Bruce Springsteen, or Bob Dylan, or something, and they just show up at your sound check, or you go down the street, you know, and they go, oh my God, you're Bob Dylan, you know? And it's just, again, surreal and, and uh, fantastic.
It's called Shrike. Spark me to the hawthorn tree Piece by piece you devour me Garden shrubs, mantle falls While I'm writhing on the hawthorn tree I heard the brook within her breath Is selling now a tenderness Peace becomes such gentle torture I hear the earth suck in a breath I think the biggest thing that is the greatest thing for me on stage is connecting with the band and musically. And just there are moments on stage where my voice does something and I don't even, I, don't, I have no control over it. It's just doing it by itself and it's, it's, it makes me happy. I don't even know how to do it. It's a contentedness. I think it's, I think a lot of women experience it when they give birth. I mean, it's really nothing that they're doing, it just is happening to them, but they go, God, look what I'm doing. Look, I made a baby. <laughs> you know? And I, I think that when I sing sometimes, I have this moment of, wow, did you hear that? That was cool. <laughs> and that doesn't happen very often in people's lives. So when it does happen, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and it's a feeling contented.
Thank you. September skies Bodies falling Never again will you Catch me admiring Those vast September skies October skies Heat is flying Crimson leaves Slowly falling from As October skies Kill our children and sing about it. Let's all kill our children and sing about it. December skies Star will be rising Will we hear those lessons Ringing through those dark December As a singer, you have to have a good song. I'm not a great songwriter. I can write a song, I've written a few, but they're not great songs. They're just mediocre songs. But in order to be a really good singer, you need a really good song. And whether it's Michael Timmons or Leonard Cohen or Neil Young or Bob Dylan, or there's a billion of them out there, um, it doesn't matter to me because as soon as I get the song, it's my song. It's up to me to reinterpret it, and that's what makes me, I hope, a good singer, is that it, it, it's now mine. And it, it, it doesn't come from him or Bruce Springsteen. It comes from where my heart is, my life experience is. But I'm singing it from where, what it means to me. And you as a listener is listening to it and reacting to it from your life experiences, which I have no understanding of and, and don't know about. Michael, my brother, as a songwriter, and, and us as a songwriting team, 
The greatest gift that he's given me is that he's not, um, he has no ego. When he writes a song, he, that's his expression, and when he hands it to me, however I interpret it, and I'm going to interpret it from a female perspective, <laughs> that's my first, first entry, you know, entry into a song, um, it's okay. He never sort of says, well, you know, that's not what I meant, you know, why are you doing it that way? It's my song, and he allows me to do it my way, and that's, I, I think that's his greatest gift to me. I, I you know, because it must be hard sometimes when I take his songs and <laughs> muck them all up, and it's not what he intended. But, um, but he realizes, you know, that's my expression, and he has his, which is the actual writing of it.
Y'all made up your mind by leaving tomorrow. Take it all and leave my gun and boy.